All right. So, last time, the crew had made their way to the current hideout of the Blade Brotherhood, an old temple under the city of Waterdeep that contained a weak point in the veil between the planes of existence. Riley had been compelled to step into a stone circle by a dominate person spell by the leader of the Brotherhood, a tiefling woman known as Radiance. As the rest of the crew ran in, the stone circle activated with, uh, with magic and enveloped Riley in an electrical burst, trapping her in place. A battle erupted, with the Brotherhood's leader in, lead enforcer Alabaster on the front line with some hellhounds keeping Brimstone and Saoirse busy. Zelfine rushed past Radiance to help her friend Riley. Aemon went in swords blazing, but Radiance proved a slippery foe, turning invisible and rushing away. Before Zelfine and Riley, between Zelfine and Riley, though, they managed to tear her out of the stone circle, only to find that they had essentially taken a, taken a stopper out of a bottle, as an enormous dragon leg stomped out. Riley's magic went wild and allowed her to identify part that, that as part of the dragon goddess, Tiamat. During the fight, Brimstone tr- took time to try and talk Alabaster out of attacking them. She hesitated for a moment before Radiance magically compelled her to attack. One well-timed hit on Radiance, though, forced her to lose concentration on the spell, leaving Alabaster to reconsider Brimstone's words before she turned on the hellhounds at her side. Riley and Zelfine, meanwhile, began to find a way to disrupt the magic circle, using magic missiles to smash the crystals at the hands of the statues and baiting the dragon goddess into smashing the statues of themselves. The battle came to an end as Aemon took one final swing and decapitated Radiance, her head and body sinking deep into the strange pool in the cavern that reflected a night sky that nobody here had seen before. When the power source uh, destroyed the- with the power source destroyed, the rift closed, leaving Tiamat still locked in the Nine Hells. There's a beat of silence before the city watch appears, Percy at their lead. He tells the party they did good and gently brushes the debris out of Zelfing's hair. Now, Riley, you are standing at the edge of the pool. Brimstone had handed you some coins to toss into the water. It is glowing slightly purple and still reflects that starry sky, a round orb at its center. You, Katie, recognize it as a swirling bright blue-green planet, but I can't imagine Riley knows what a planet looks like from orbit. Probably the, not. Yep. <laughs> the rooms <laughs> that had once dotted your skin had peeled away af- as the uh, gate had closed. They had, di- they had all dissolved into fragments and taken back into the rift as it had closed up. As you finally settle down and take a moment to breathe... You suddenly are hit with an odd sensation. It's like you've been going through your whole life with a stomach ache, roiling and turning inside of you. And now it's finally stopped, and you've never known what it's like to feel without this uneasiness in the pit of your stomach. For a moment, you almost feel a little empty. Yeah. That's wild. Eh. (laughs) (laughs) Riley just goes whack yep (laughs) yeah pretty much (laughs) and at the end of the last session you sent me a note saying that you wanted to do something at the edge of the pond here I did um she is actually going to take eight gold coins out of her pocket um and uh She's going to say, kind of, like, to no one, uh, I know it could have gotten better. I don't think you all had to die, but you did, and I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but at least with these, you can rest in peace. And she, uh... She dips her hands into the water to release the coins into the water. Yeah, and as you reach down and your hand goes into the water and you let go of the coins, the world around you goes black. 
All you can see oh, uh-oh. is the stars in the pool lit up around you. And suddenly there is more lights floating up in the air surrounding you. You can't see anybody else, though. All you can see is these lights in the darkness. And as you kind of glance down back towards the water, you see glancing, you see like a big like shape. And as you look up again, you see this bright light floating above you. It coalesces into this multicolored shape, this huge, gi- just gigantic dragon looking down at you. Made, seems to be made out of stars, purples and turquoises. And you hear a voice in your head. It's commanding, but somehow it feels warm. Child of the devils. You have purged yourself of the poison that had laid within you. The gateway that has threatened to rip this world apart has been sealed, thanks to you. I have not expected one such as you to prevent your kin from disrupting the balance we starborn to hold in order. You have done well. Uh, Oh, well, shucks, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you are well, I, <laughs> you are what we call a source sources are blessed with the ability to channel magic be it from blood or power of nature it all flows through them as a river would flow you feel different now do you not I do. It's like I had this weight on me this whole time I didn't even notice, but it's gone now. That was the poison. Tiamat's pawn had forced that magic within you. It was unpredictable, dangerous. It had the potential to kill you. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> It is expelled now, but that does mean you are not as powerful as you were when you first entered this cavern. Mm. However, you have done the universe a great service. I can give you a gift to compensate for that loss. A new place to pull your magic from. One that is offered willingly and not forced upon. And with that, a bright round light appears in front of you. It's yellow and warm, and it feels like it's calling to you. Riley just smiles and goes, finally a magic I can call my own. And she, uh, puts a hand towards towards it yeah and as you like touch it it lights up your hand and enters into it and you feel this pleasant warmth as your whole body begins to glow it starts from your fingers and spreads all the way to your body and tingles through your toes it feels like an embrace instead of that rolling chaos storm within your pit of your stomach it's like a warm blanket (laughs) Oh, the blanket! We finally found the blanket! Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and so that's what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> you feel that warmth and the darkness begins to fade a bit. The light's fading a bit. And the last thing you hear is the, that creature... That giant dragon again. In the heart of all my children is a bright shining star. Some may dim or become black holes over time. However, the star at the scent of your heart shines brightly tonight. Be proud of yourself, for you are now starborn. And as that vision fades, you're left alone you're left in that cavern again. You see your friends out of the corner of your eye. Riley, you're no longer a wild magic sorcerer. 
You're now a divine soul sorcerer. Oh, yo! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that was real good. That was okay. <laughs> Awesome. Do, we, do we see anything of this? What do we see? You see Riley put her hand in the weird water after everybody said, maybe we shouldn't touch the weird water. And then, <laughs> then she comes and stands up. Yeah, Zophine had just seen her kind of like kneeling by the water and just, you know, in her current state, slowly shuffled over. You okay? Riley just has a big, goofy smile. And she goes, yeah, feeling pretty good. Well, Can okay. I perception or insight and see like if if I notice any significant change? Uh, yeah, that would be an insight. Okay, give me a second. I think my dice are in the front room. Shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't Guys, prepare for dice. How do you not have dice on you when we're playing Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> Who needs <a> dice? <laughs> I mean, uh, there's always roll 20. There's buttons there, but. <laughs> oh, I forgot to have roll 20 as well. Oops. That's okay. I don't think we'll <laughs> actually need it too much this time, but. Unless surprise combat! Oh no! Oh no, the uh, random <laughs> encounters are still prompting. <laughs> okay, hold on. I gotta find my. Uh... Oh, down the nice skew. Oh, get some repels. Uh, my insight. Insight is now. Now that. Ooh, a uh, 16. 16. Ooh. Riley seems to be standing a little bit taller. Oh, wow, that's very tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she's tall as hell. Well, you've always noticed, yeah, like, like, Riley kind of, like, always curls in a little bit, right? She's a little, always looks a little mm -hmm. scared, yeah. doesn't go up to her full height. She's standing proud yeah. now. Mm -hmm. You doing okay, Riley? I feel fantastic. That makes one of us, Damon says, bleeding. Oh, I forgot you were bleeding! Ah! <laughs> you, have a, you have a... Uh... Well, actually, uh... No, that only procs when someone else does a thing. I was just checking the features of it, like, you could do a cool healing thing. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I don't know what, uh... Yeah, we're probably not going to use any of her uh, actual abilities yeah, yeah, yeah. today, but... Yeah, because I don't know... I don't know them. It was just going to be a cool thing. <laughs> just cute, yeah. cool little character there. moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Riley does help uh, Shirsa with Amond, though. <laughs> just propping him up. Yep. All right. I thought I was going to die. Uh, yeah. Oh. Actually, you have mm -hmm. Cure Wounds on your spell list now. <gasps> Eamon's fine. He's, he's all right. He's all right. Okay, but Dan, I'm okay. trying to facilitate a cool character moment. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes, do the, do the cool character moment. Honestly, yeah. If, like, uh, maybe she'll give it a go and go, like, man, I wish I could heal you right now. And then, boom. Cure wounds. <laughs> yeah, it like it lights up in your hand and it feels that warmth again. You're used to like your hands being very cold because you use a lot of ice magic, but as you like, mm -hmm. it feels very warm suddenly. And as you touch him, he does get some hit points back. I'm just gonna pull up Minerva sheet because I'm pretty sure she's got cure wounds. Yeah. Thank you. That makes me go know. smile. Amen will just smile and kind of. Can I make a religion check to see to see if, <laughs> if, if I realize that Riley has had a divine revelation? One last religion check. <laughs> for right. old time's sake. For old time's sake, this kind of can be yeah. a religion check. <laughs> yeah. I actually have better insight than religion. I'm just choosing to go... Re okay, 17. <laughs> 17. Yeah. She definitely seems like she's seen something. Eamon just kind of smiles and nods like he knows. He only kind of knows, but like he smiles and nods like he yeah. actually knows. Yeah. 
Specifically because the cosmic dragon is not a religion you're well versed in. <laughs> you just know that something's happened. Yeah, we've met one guy, I think. Yeah, one one whole guy. Eamon traveled with him for like a long time. True. So you, you kind of oh. know that, but at the same time, you know that the cosmic dragon isn't really a, a established religion in well, Waterdeep or the surrounding areas. Like, the first time you ever heard of it was from Raj. Neato Burrito. Neato Burrito. Well, uh, at this point, Brim is going to kind of look around at everybody and go, I think... I think we should go have some soup. I yeah. think we gotta clear out this place and make sure we have the potion that was used to poison that one guy, though, because I don't want him to die. <laughs> I, I think we did already find the poison. You, you found the antidote, I believe, in the desk next to the journal. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, my mistake. You're good. We're all set, and yeah, we need to get you to doctor. <laughs> yeah, I just need like a nap, honestly. Percy, uh, can we uh, can we head back to your house? Of course. Uh, I need to stay here a little bit longer. Um, just make sure that Flump hasn't eaten more of my books. And he looks at <laughs> Zelfie and he goes, "You know the way." Don't leave. He does like the the, the two eye things, like he's watching you. Don't leave my house, though. Okay. Eamon has this like mass. Eamon looks to, to Percy and then to Zelfine and then back again, and he gets this massive grin on his face. <laughs> Zelfine kind of looks herself over for a second. And she was like, "I don't." I don't even have a witty comeback. I'm I'm going to sleep, so I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> don't get We're blood. Not, don't know. don't get blood in my sheets. Okay. Put down a towel. See, most, not most of my bleeding right now is internal, and that's where it's supposed to be anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> he just kind of face palms at that. <laughs> look, look, look at Sierra and be like, "Is that right? Is that?" I mean, it's easier to fix if it's on the inside, because then we're not losing blood. Technically, we can kind of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sirsha trying to explain goes like, ah, forget it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Also, uh, hello. As as we're, uh, unless anybody had anything else they wanted to do before we then lose from here. Uh. Well, I've got I've got a thing uh, that mm -hmm. Brum wants to talk to Sirsha about as we're as we're leaving. But yeah, we should take care of anything else. Yeah, we I'm all do set. Here cool. Yeah, but before you do that, as you are wandering back through here, you see that the the entire t temple basically has been taken over by uh, water deep watchmen that are turning this place inside out, and you do not spot the people that you had passed on the way in. You don't see Umi. You don't see Leototh. They seem to have vanished. Yeah. That Primstone definitely takes note of that. Is there a horde of Eanvins somewhere? You didn't look. <laughs> May I look? Uh, yeah. You're bleeding. You're bleeding out, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> bleeding but gold, it's just though. bleeding out and stumbling through the, the like basement of the cops. I'm <laughs> just walking, walking through the, the fucking, like, the police line to try and, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've no, got Zelfine like... is the... Zelfine's a woman with three hit points, and she mostly just looks super uncomfortable at how many cops are here. She's avoiding high contact with all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th this place is crawling with them, so you do get like, uh, as you try to go look, you get like a hand on your shoulder from one of the watchmen, going, "You should um, go lay down, sir." I'm fine. We've got this covered, sir. There was a dragon here. Good, good job, sir. I, it, fine, whatever. Amen. I yeah, think he's us to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I speak up, okay. Okay, we don't Brim need is, money. We got soup. 
<laughs> I well, definitely need money, but I mean... <laughs> actually, uh, I'm looking at my... Uh, Br Brimson will walk over to, to, to kind of like, as we're leaving, he'll uh, sort of go up to, uh, to Sears and go, actually, I'm looking at my ingredients and uh, I'm kind of low on the uh, soup ingredients that we have. Um, and seeing almost everybody, I think, needs really needs a nap. Would you be willing to go to the markets with me and maybe we can find some stuff for soup? Yeah, I think that would be nice. Yeah, if 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 you're okay joining us, like you know, yeah, you helped us with this. Like, you always yeah. got a place at our uh, at our uh, soup pot. Or some Thanks. like realizes he's never <laughs> he's never articulated that to anybody before. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he did to Croker actually. Yes, just smoother. <laughs> <laughs> Much smoother. <laughs> Much smoother. <laughs> Van Casanova over here. Broker was absolutely seduced. <laughs> of course. Of course. Alright. Um, Brim will also be like kind of blocking to prevent like cops or any lookers on as well as we're leaving to, from getting eyes as much as he can from getting eyes on like Alabaster or Zelphine or, or Riley. Yeah. You see they're mostly concerned with cleaning this place out. And you do spot to uh, holding on to what looks like the last few Brotherhood members that were parked out here. You see a couple of just grunt-looking guys, but you see a, a pair. One is a, a lizard folk decked out in, like, a goat skull on his head and various, like, tattered uh, clothes and, a, like, a plump-looking tiefling next to him and they're like being pushed away and they're both yelling you can't do that to us we were here first yeah we weren't doing nothing what are you talking about describe the second guy again sorry uh just it was a chubby looking tiefling wearing like a, a floppy beret <laughs> right. Eamon goes to the lizard folk and says I like your goat skull and then he just leaves and you hear him go Thanks. It's a. It was a present from my mother after she named me Skullovich. What? My name is Skullovich. That's a cool name. Uh, if you need a lawyer, let me know. All right. What's a lawyer? Oh boy. Oh dear. <laughs> oh no. Skullovich. <laughs> We All can't events. ever, no. we can't walk down the fucking street without some random person who's got like a whole thing in, <laughs> entering our field of view, huh? We really, we just attract people who have something going on. <laughs> definitely not we the comic relief. Definitely not the comic <laughs> relief villains I hid in the corner that you guys missed. Oh no! Missed you missed Team Rocket. Rocket. <laughs> you no, missed yet, yeah, like the. No, you missed Bulkmeyer and Skullovich. We did. Oh, oh no, that's so funny. I'm no. sorry. Repeat your names for me. Bulkmeyer and Skullovich. Okay, so Bulk and Skull. Oh. Yeah, uh huh. It's Bulk and Skull. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry we missed them. That's hilarious. That's, a, that's no. okay. We were... <laughs> We'll get them. We'll get them in the next campaign. There'll yep. be a callback, and yeah, yeah, they'll, and they'll we'll show again. Oh, is what's gonna back. happen? <laughs> Same cinematic universe. <laughs> they're the key. They're the key to connect all the universes together. Yes, yes, Bulk and Skull. <laughs> You're the gonna skull joke about this, universe. and there's gonna be something like <laughs> that. <laughs> and... <laughs> yep. To <laughs> Percy's house. To Percy's house. Yeah. <laughs> Grandmother's house. We go. Mm -hmm. All right. The detective's house. Yeah. Takes you a little bit to work your way back out through the area, past the, the burnt remains of Yanvin, past the sewers, but you eventually find your way back out into the dock ward. As Eamon passes by the burnt remains of Yanvin, he just kind of goes, bitch. <laughs> it's your ass. The burnt remains do nothing. They are burnt remains. 
<laughs> Good. That's what I thought. <laughs> Yamin's not doing well. Yep. <laughs> a little delirious. No, yeah, you need a rest, bud. And uh, Riley just pats him on the head. <laughs> Thank you. Pat, pat. All right. Yeah, you exit out into the dock ward and start making your way back up to Percy's house. Are we walking the whole way? I think... Mm. Eamon calls his horse. Yeah, Maggie Maggie appears. Eamon, you look like shit! (laughs) (laughs) Well, at least least Maggie is honest with you. so diplomatic about it, Maggie. (laughs) That's why I like Maggie. She's so unfiltered. You know what? Let's fuck it. We don't need to be walking the whole way. Let's take let's take the fucking bus. Let's take the bus. Okay, because I was about we to say it. if we walk the whole way, you get about a third of the way there, and Zelfine's <laughs> going real slow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, we saved the world. We deserve a, a bus trip. Just all of us, like Alabaster, everyone included, just on the bus. They're looking like absolute garbage next to some random merchant just, like, commuting. Yeah. And Amos yep. is, like, riding the horse alongside the bus. Alabaster looks like the most uncomfortable person you've ever seen on a bus. She is too big for the seats, and she's kind of curled in awkwardly. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> Delphine's just, like, half purple with bruising at this point, and it just kind of, like, takes her about 20 seconds to actually sit down. <laughs> yeah, the, the cart like it's already going, and you're still standing trying to sit down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brim will do that mm-hmm. fun. Uh, I imagine Brim and Brim and maybe Sue should just do that fun awkward nod at different commuters. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're doing like the like thin mouth, like white people smile, just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you get a couple people like <laughs> avoiding eye contact. You get the odd like kid that is staring at you and pointing with mouth agape, and then like their mom grabs them and t- covers their eyes <laughs> to tr- try to make them not be a- like that. <laughs> Don't be an adventurer, kid. It's not worth it. And you see one of the moms <laughs> like mouthing, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Like a cobbler or a blacksmith, all of those are great to read. One of them, one of them's gonna say, "Eat your vegetables. That way, they don't come back and beat you up like they did us." <laughs> <laughs> With the most serious expression at the kid. Yeah, this small child, their eyes go really wide, and he like looks up at his mom, and she kind of like raises an eyebrow and nods and goes, "Uh huh," and he goes, <gasps> and like is having a little mini crisis in the chair. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, I think this is the first time Riley in public is not wearing her hood. She's feeling very confident and smiley. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, before too long, uh, we're Brim and Sersha getting off before you hit uh, Percy's house to get to the market, or... Yeah. Eamon's actually going to go back to uh, Korg and um, Korg in his apartment. Okay, down in the, the he's, southern he's some, ward. Yeah, he's got can some you, business he needs to take care of. Can you guys uh, take care of Alabaster? Um, yeah. Or, like, I, I guess I want to see like, if Alabaster like would prefer to stick with, like, you know, Brendan Searsha because we were right there with her, or if, like, she's cool going with the others, too. She kind of, like, looks at you brimstone like with a little pleading look and then looks at riley and kind of like curls up a bit and goes i i i i'll go where you need me to i uh we we might go where wesley is is that all right maybe maybe where do you you want to see a giant crab not really no Sushet was gonna say. Eamon trots yeah. off. <laughs> Where do you want to go, Alabaster? That question like leaves her stunned for a second, and she like as she's processing what you just asked. N- nobody's asked me that b- before. Uh, I don't. I don't know. 
I don't make d d decisions. I follow orders. <laughs> Reggie! Shh. <laughs> Buddy, I'm having a moment. <laughs> Aw, Reggie. <clears throat> Reggie also wants a moment. Yes. <laughs> this isn't your game, bud. Go sleep. Go sleep. <laughs> oh, buddy. Reggie. Oh no. Reggie. I want to hear Trisha's response to this, Reggie. <laughs> I might have to go push him outside again. One second. Reggie. Reggie, yeah. if you wanted no to play, you should have rolled up a character like the rest of us. Go, go outside. It's a little late, buddy. We're yeah. ending the campaign. <laughs> we'll get yeah. you on the next one, bud. Yeah, maybe <laughs> next time. <laughs> <sighs> All right, sorry about that. <laughs> He's oh, outside no now. <laughs> He's getting <laughs> r antsy. He was sleeping all nice and good. Sersha, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, making decisions is a little scary, but it's... I would think it's the first step to taking back your freedom, and yourself from what Radiance took from you. She pauses for a second and kind of like plays with her fingers and goes, I, I think I'll go to the house. I'm a little overwhelmed. Too many people in the mar art market. Completely fair. We'll see you at home, okay, Alabaster? O okay. Alright, and you two get off at the, the trade ward. And everybody else continues up to the, uh, the house. And as everybody else gets to the house, yep, you, you Percy has given you a key at this point, so <laughs> you can get in. Mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a point of order, when the bus does stop, uh, Riley would notice Zelfine is, like, completely passed out asleep. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah, and Alabaster seeing this will go, D -d do you need me to Carry her. Only if you want to. I... I want to. And she, like, the big tiefling woman scoops up this, this half-elf. <laughs> who feels like, probably weighs n almost nothing. This is Zelfine. Probably, yeah. <laughs> tiefling. And they all mm -hmm. wander into the house. I was going to say, I bet Percy gave us a key because last time we did pick a lock and broke his lock. Yeah. So he's like, nope, not again. He's like, nope, <laughs> hate this shit. I'm just I don't like that. Take a key and stop that. It's not a sign of trust as much as a uh, preventative measure to avoid more destruction of property. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, as you walk into the house, you, you see the flailing tentacles of Tony come flying towards all of you. Alabaster has an immediately res response of like holding closer to Zelfine and pulling back a bit. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. He's a friend. He's just a little Zelfie. I don't know. You're a little wiggly. And he like looks at the unconscious Zelfie and he goes, is she dead? No, oh, she's just tired. She gets Zelfine tired might. a lot. At, at, at being pulled back and all of this kind of like jerks and like with one loud like snore kind of like shakes herself awake is suddenly like huh, what? what oh it's just Tony okay and yeah <laughs> Tony like floats over and Alabaster sl like leans back slightly as Tony gets closer and like his eyes are put like right in front of you Zelfine and he goes Zelfine Zelfie I am awake what do you want? I had babies. <laughs> huh? I'm going back to sleep. And you when see, I wake up, I'm not 
gonna say that again. Out of the corner of your eye, you see the tiniest little shape float by. And it looks like a tiny, tiny little Tony. Zuffin oh, completely sits no. up as much as she can in Alabaster's arms and is like, Tony! I couldn't help it. it Tony, not again! <laughs> Wait, what? Again? Tony of all places! <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Why is there more of him? Yeah. Alabaster, can you put me down? I have to deal with this. And she, like, very gingerly puts her, you down. And yeah, Riley, you're seeing it out of the corner of your eye, too. There's tiny little floating octopuses, basically, flying pancakes in your vision. They're so tiny, though. They're, like, maybe a centimeter big. How, oh my, how many? That's tiny. Mm, and you see him, like... Count like counting on his tentacles basically and goes 20. Tw uh. I got stressed and had babies. It happens. Uh. <laughs> Zelfine, does this just happen? I can't imagine a more hellish existence than one where getting stressed causes you to experience childbirth. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I, I don't yeah, you know, know that stress causes it, but yeah, this is what flumps fucking do. I've seen him do it once before. It. Childbirth is a famously stress-free experience, <laughs> by the way, obviously. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> the stress uh... has nothing to do with the fact that he had babies. He just happened to ha happen at both at the same time. He just is correlating the two. <laughs> what you... <Eve> <laughs> What even is Tony? <laughs> Tony is not as a creature, but as a person. A father. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, no yeah. argument here. Congratulations, Tony. Yeah. If anybody was yeah. under any delusions that this was going to be a very serious, heartfelt, uh, just completely, you know, straight-laced wrap-up to this campaign. Uh, no, never. Tony had babies, yes. guys. It's beautiful. It's the miracle of life. Like I want to read this straight out of the the, the the wiki for flumps. Flumps reproduce about once every two years by a budding process in which between one and eight tiny younglings sprout from their adult undersides. <laughs> the young flumps become fully <laughs> independent after three months upon reaching a diameter of two inches. <laughs> They then now I have a very, oh I have a very important question about this. Uh, since Tony was the one who did the counting, can Tony just not count, or did Tony just like fucking go ham? <laughs> Tony can't count. He's never okay. he's never been able to count. Okay. As okay, he said, we... as he said, like twenty, he held up like the number four. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank good. Goodness. I was I was about to say. <sighs> yeah. So Zelfie kind of looks around and like counts herself and like sees the four and is like. Okay, we can deal with this. Oh, um, she's just she's gonna go wander into the kitchen and try to find a dish towel and she's gonna um <laughs> use that to try to like very gently corral all of them to stay very near Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah it it takes a little bit of time, but you get them all like cordoned together. Now take your kids and go upstairs. Okay, and you see the like flump cloud basically at this point with the little tiny tag alongs start floating up the stairs. Alabaster looks at you, Zelfie, and goes, "That oh, that was something." I attract very strange company. I don't know. I, I have no other explanation. You see the tiniest little smile cross her face. And we're going to cut to Brimstone and Sertia. You guys are wandering around the market. <clears throat> Brim has gotten, um, he's kind of like, as we stepped off, he definitely took stock of like all the, the ingredients that like he's, he's had in his pack and like, um, He's like kind of muttering to himself, making a, a mental list, and uh, 
he eventually just kind of like uh sort of just kind of shakes his head and is like let's just look around at the at what they have see if anything looks good um actually have you you haven't done this before with us have you no i haven't it's just it's something from my hometown um we just get a bunch of different ingredients. Everyone would pick something to put in the pot, and that'd be the soup that we'd make. It, it's sort of about bringing everyone together and it, it's about how even when the family that's come together is different and, you know, has all sorts of different stories and, uh, you know, maybe not everybody's come there like this. Everybody has a very, you know, there may be pain, there may be uh, longing, grief. But once everybody has come together, you can still make something that, you know, works, that comforts everybody, that, you know, brings us all together. Kind of like a, a symbolism thing. Um, it also sometimes is just because in my village it was just all that we had, but it, it's, it's a bit of a tradition. And the little family that we've got here that, you know, that it just reminds me of my hometown a lot. And, I'm over explaining it. Um <laughs> That sounds really nice. And Ginger's kinda nuts. Um And at this point they're just like he's just like looking over and I'll he'll spend like um as far as like ingredients, he'll probably spend like um uh cooking rations, uh probably spend like a good um like a couple gold maybe you know like five gold i think on on various cooking ingredients just to get some good high quality stuff and some variety as we're doing this just to take care of that yeah um i want to say it we really did that huh unless i've been hallucinating the past few hours i think we did It makes me happy that, I don't know how to say it, that we did it as us. We didn't, you know, uh, we, everybody, everybody that we, we did this with was able to stay themselves. I don't think I would have felt as good about it if if some, if we felt like we needed to live up to anything, you know, or, or change, or... I like who we all are, and I'm glad that we were able to sit together and stay and be ourselves in that way. It's a small thing to think about when it comes to saving the world. It pales in comparison to things like getting you know, giant dragon legs and shit, but... <laughs> what, um... Did you have anything you were... You wanted to do now? I mean, we found out there's some... So we can... You know... Probably just... Go somewhere quiet. Try and start again. Sounds nice. Um, and 
Brim kind of gets like a little bashful and a, a little, you know, he sees like he's he's definitely very feverish. Like he's he's whenever he talks to Sirius, he's always been kind of like meandering around his words, but he definitely seems like he's kind of hesitating a lot here. Um, after like sort of a a long fight of thought, he's like. This is going to sound bored and, and weird, but would you be interested in, I don't know, uh, sticking around with me for a bit longer? If you're looking for somewhere quiet, uh, there's a town in the mountains that needs a little bit of rebuilding. If that's, if that's not your scene, I totally understand, but... How long would it take to rebuild? Do you think? Um... I don't know. It's been years since. It's been years since I've I've been there. If you have other stuff to do, you know, don't 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 worry about it. You can forget I said anything. It's just. If... Well. I can. I can help. Yes. <coughs> Is that what you want to do? Because I don't want to be forcing you into anything. I mean, you've, you've helped us all so much. I definitely... No, it's nothing like that. It's just... It's hard to feel like... It's hard to accept, I should say. That you would want me around for something other than what I can do. As far as being a paladin and healing and things like that. And what kind of like think on that for a second and he'll um he'll just sort of uh you won't respond for a second and he'll he'll kind of have like a bit of a far away look and and then he'll say back in devil's ages when i was growing up There were a lot of different types of people that came through. Most stayed with us and helped build the town with us. Some were, uh, you know, uh, came and then left. Were just a sort of a small part of the bigger story. But and every uh, most everybody was. I guess you could say strange in some way, but everybody had different things they could do, different ways that they'd been going through life. I mean, a man that I considered my my uncle or grandfather, I'd never quite solidified the relationship with him, um, was a vampire. My grandmother was a hag. Um, there's people that I know that were devils and demons and, and all sorts of different creatures, and they had immense 
prowess in battle or immense physical strength or intelligence, but that was never the thing that, I guess, made me fall in love with them as, as family. It was, everybody had a story in Devil's Ages. And I found that to be true of everyone that I've encountered since then. Everybody has a story. It might not be a big, uh, a long story or a very complicated one, but it's theirs and it's always worth listening to. And if, if you're okay with it, I'd like to hear more of yours. You wear your heart entirely too much on your sleeve. It's gonna get you hurt one day. But... Good. Maybe I'll stick around so you can prove me wrong on that. I would like that. Uh, Reginald, I swear to God. <laughs> he's outside, and that's what you can hear from here. He, he's being hype. He's he's very hype. He's a big fan of yeah. Shearstone. This is his favorite <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, at, at that point, I think brimstone probably i think at that point while they're just finishing up doing things brimstone and sirsha uh if if she's able to we'll just kind of start uh maybe swapping small talk of different like stories and uh, brim brim at this point seems very eager to learn as much as he can about sirsha and like ask her more about you know about her life and Alderson and, and all that and yeah 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 and she's she needs a little prompting sometimes to like say something but she is very open and honest about anything he asks mm -hmm. yeah and after a bit probably they'll uh um They'll probably finish up with uh, shopping, pay the money, and, um, you know, get on a bus. Um, and I, I imagine at this point, um, uh, they, um, we're not like a, we're not like any kind of like a, a holding hand stage, but Brimstone is, is, is trying very hard to, at this point, like, um, you know, I think at this point he's probably learning that Saoirse needs a little bit of help talking about herself. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, probably like Brim is like trying to, you know, get uh, sort of uh, show her that he's interested in in who she is, not as a, you know, not just as a fighter, but in 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 who she is as a person. You know, he's asking all sorts of um, just, you know, a casual uh, uh, sort of normal, like a pretty relaxed conversation. Um, but he's asking stuff like, you know, what, uh, what her favorite foods are, um, any interesting town that she's been to. Um, he seems very, um, now that we're no longer in save the world territory, Brimstone, um, is demonstrating a very, um, earnest interest in, in all the little things about Saoirse, not the big, you know, not necessarily the big uh, life stuff. Like, he probably shies away from some of the details about, like, you know, the traumatic shit with, like, you know, some parts of her past, but he he wants to know the little things. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you all jump on the bus and start heading north. Amon, you go to your brother's house. 
that you share together. Little apartment. Yeah, and by the time Eamon gets home, he's kind of come to, like, he's out of his delirious state. And he's got a very stern look on his face. Um, and he goes, he, he goes to Korg, um, and, and sort of turns to him and says, I think it's time. He is plucking away at his loot and he looks up at you and goes, time? I think it's time for us to go back home, Korg. He kind of frowns for a second. Amen. You know, I, this is my home now. I've never Korg, been as connected to that place as you have. I know. But I can't do this without you. <sighs> he lets out a sigh. I won't stay there with you. But I'll help you get it back. Eamon smiles. There's also one other thing we need to do, though, and, uh, this is going to be very, very difficult as well. Perhaps uh, emotionally more so than, you know, physically. And he kind of, like, nods to Sheldon, who I imagine by this point is just, like, way too big for this place. Pretty big. He's kind of in the corner, up to the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we should have done this a couple weeks ago. Um, wow, he is huge. Well, I don't know. He looks about normal to me. Have you ever seen a different crab? I am curious. This is the size of the crabs we get up in Zalgum. <laughs> he just kind of, like, looks off in the distance and goes, Nah. This is okay. the only crab I've seen. All right. So, yeah, that that is why he looks like a normal crab. You, you don't have a frame of reference for crab. Yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, so, cut to the, the, the coastal district. The, the dock ward. Um, yes, the dock ward. The word. Um, uh, and, uh, Eamon is kind of standing with Sheldon and Korg, uh, at the beach where Eamon found, uh, Sheldon. Um, and he looks at his, his, his big old pet crab and says... <laughs> Well, this is the beach where we met. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't respond because he's a yeah. crab. You, you, you just see him staring off in the distance with his little crab eyes. Sheldon, you need to be with your own kind. You know, meet crab friends and make crab babies and eat whatever crabs eat. They think you eat pretty much everything. Bubbles form at its mouth. You ate my soap, clearly. Korg, did he eat my soap? Uh, no. I fed him your soap. <laughs> Why did you feed him my soap? You know what? We'll deal with that later. Thought it'd be cleaned his insides. Okay, a lot on uh, Korg. I think we got to Korg cut you is off, fucking man. zooted right now. I swear to God, what the fuck? Korg had an Korg. edible just before he showed up. I yeah. swear to God. A hundred percent. He is not here. He's his eyes are a little red around the corners. <laughs> Only he's gonna a little. Wake up tomorrow, gonna be like, where the fuck? Is <laughs> yeah, he's definitely gonna go where the fuck shelled it tomorrow. <laughs> You also have to remember the reason why he thinks uh, Sheldon is fine is if Cork is high all the time. <laughs> Cork, you really gotta cut down on that shit, man. Helps me relax. Yeah, I mean, there's other ways to relax. There's like reading, exercise. Tried that. Sucks, man. Cork, your shoulders are the size of fucking bowling balls. How do you 
How do you maintain that? All I see you do all day is sit around and smoke weed. Good jeans. Whatever. <laughs> Sheldon, I'm gonna miss you. I love you. You were a very good pet. Is like a little beady eyes turn to you. And then it just crawls into the safe and is gone. Eamon cries and it sheds a single tear. <laughs> Keep it together, Eamon. Leaps it over the edge of the, the <laughs> little area like Free Willy. It's just a giant hey, crab. F- <laughs> Amos like, did I have an edible too? <laughs> <laughs> You have you have family soup later. Don't come to dinner high. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Come to dinner high. <laughs> Don't come to dinner high unless you're sharing. <laughs> I roll that back. The Do not put an edible in the family soup. <laughs> <laughs> Three yeah, kinds of people. Some wicked as fuck in the family soup. <laughs> Three. Oh, Tony, drug up the soup. <laughs> Rim would absolutely check for edibles in this soup. <laughs> yep. Or is that whole Just board is invited, trying and, but like... I'm trying and Brim's like, what are you doing? Big sniff. Oh no, that's dank. You can't put that in. <laughs> the, the... Oh, Everything is allowed in family <laughs> soup except for that. <laughs> We got we got brimstone on ingredients watch. Anyways, he's got that good sniffer. He knows. But uh, yeah, now as you say goodbye to Sheldon, you hear the clip clop clip clop of a horse appre- approaching on the the dock. Eventually, it like hits the sand, and you look over and you see that the willowy form of. Uh, I had a total dead moment in my brain here. One second. Minerva. Maggie? It's not Minerva. Oh, it's not Minerva. Maggie. It's Minerva. Willowy form of her. She, this old woman gets off the, the horse and walks towards you, standing proud and tall, and looks at you and goes, Amond, congratulations. What do you want? She kind of gives a small smile. Ah, to the point. Very well. I am simply here to deliver some news. <sighs> Renault has vanished from our care. I and? Do not, I do not know where he has gone. Though I fear he has fled to Zaglum, you may need to bolster your own forces before you head off. Be wary. Right. He has proven that the he is no longer worthy of Tyr's love or power, but I fear that knowledge will drive him to do something terrible. You best be on your toes. I've fought far worse and won. I'm sorry? Uh, Eamon says, I've fought far worse and won. It seems that way. I simply wish to warn you. And to tell you that I will not stand in your way. I have requested a permanent relocation to Waterdeep. Crusading is no longer my want in this world. I'm tired and I'm old. I'm sure you've waited a long time for that. Believe me, I knew you were tired and old 15 years ago. <laughs> the aim is not laughing. She is. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Minerva. You may not think it. I speak the truth, but I do wish you the best of luck out there. And she turns, and she gets back on her horse. Gallops gallops off towards the Church of Tear on the north end. 
I sincerely hope I never see her again. Cord kind of looks at you and goes, I mean, if you're going ever to the church here, you probably will. Oh, fuck you. Well, I gotta visit you sometime, don't I? He shrugs. I will visit you sometime. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Get a good old party going. Exactly. Speaking um, of, are you going to go see your friends? The weird. Ones. I was actually going to. I was actually going to invite you along. I'm sure they'd love to have you. Need music for the night? He plucks on his lute. <laughs> Your accord. I'll even pay your exorbitant rates. Good, because I wasn't doing it for free. <laughs> Wouldn't expect you to, Korg. Pay your artists, people. God. <laughs> Korg's not doing it for exposure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we grab Ellerson wherever he is? Yeah, he is... Before you would have left, Percy would have told you that he and Wesley are at one of the watch stations giving a like a report. Okay. Uh, shall Searsha and Brim just take care of that? Grab them before we head home. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you hit up one of the the watch stations, and they they you you catch them in like a, a, a meeting, tell telling them exactly what they've seen. Alderson at the like sees you kind of walk in and goes, and I believe that is all I can give you for right now. That is my experience. And the person behind the counter goes, yep, okay. That's a, that's a lot. Be safe, sir. And he looks at the, the watch person, looks at Wesley and goes, you need a vacation. Yeah, I do. Mm. <laughs> I'll uh, tell the the, the boss man that you, you definitely need a vacation. I'm pretty sure he knows. <laughs> and they just have this laugh moment, but it's like awkwardly laughed on <laughs> Wesley's side. Alderson gets up. Big smile on his face as he walks over. Sersha, you're safe. Patty, and they hug. Big hug. Know. That big hug. He like squeezes you. Mm-hmm. And it goes on for, it feels like a moment, but it's a very long hug because you guys haven't seen each other in a long while. Yeah, like 10 years, maybe a little more. Mm-hmm. And he just says, I'm so sorry. I've, I looked for, for you all over. Every lead I picked up was led to a dead end. It, it's my fault. I... I shouldn't have run away. I mean... Things happen so quickly. I don't really blame you for that. I'm glad. I was so scared you did. I was afraid you had died. I had not seen or heard from you, and you being the way you are, I feared somebody would misjudge you. Embrace their blade. No, I I stayed safe. Um, You know, just tried to lay low. Mm -hmm. You're a smart girl. Always were. I learned from the best. (laughs) He smiles. I had spent my times in all kinds of libraries looking for any information on any way to find you. There is nothing, of course, (laughs) but I found all kinds of interesting information on the, the, the rifts between the universes. Which is... Tell me. 
Yes, this is exactly why the Brotherhood had their sights on me. You always were too curious for your own good. <laughs> it does tend to get me in a little bit of trouble. We also is... write in. <laughs> this is Brimstone, by the way. Ah, yes. You are, um, tall. <laughs> he has a big smile. You've been, uh, traveling with my Sertia. Uh, yeah, just, just for a little bit, but, um, yeah, she's been... She's been a huge help to us and... And, uh, and everything. Um, I'm, I'm glad we could find you. It's, uh, it's, it's good to properly meet you when, you know, the world isn't in danger and stuff. <laughs> Don't you, don't you know it? Oh. I was in that cell for so long. Uh, I was worried that would be the last place I'd ever be. Brimstone knows a place where we can go that's safe. Oh. So... Maybe after we finish things up here, we could head that way. Yes, I would very much like to be away from the city. It's too loud, too large. Alamport. What? Sorry. <laughs> I, I, never mind, never mind. Amy's not here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um... It's it's not much. Um, we don't have uh, a lot of uh, amenities. I haven't uh, been there myself in um, in a couple of years, but uh, it. Well, let's say it's a fixer upper where no one's gonna bother us. I used to live in a f little cottage in the woods with only her. It's oh, okay, so you know. I'm used to it, uh, and I'm used to being on the run away from most amenities. So, this sounds positively delightful, frankly. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're an expert on the risk between worlds, I think I think it might behoove us to look there. I don't know. I was not there when the village was founded, so I don't know what. There's lots of various magics that are that were present in that area when I grew up, so it might behoove it, having someone like you to look and check and. Make sure that we're not, you know, sitting on any crazy ley line shit would be helpful. You see, like, a shift in his eyes at this point. And Sertia, you know this is him going into, like, archaeologist mode, where he started speculating. Oh, so, uh, yes, I see. Uh, perhaps there was a druids in the area. They tend to be around areas with the, the where the veil is weakest. And then there are often there are standing stones around things like that. And... <laughs> We've lost him for the evening. He's gonna be on this all night. Well, let's make sure at least he, he eats something. Um, Alderson, how do you feel about soup? And then the, the, there's often... Soup? Al Alderson. Soup. Yes, uh, soup. And soup is delightful. Wesley, come have soup. Uh, what's gonna be in the soup? We will figure that out. I'm allergic to peanuts. I will make sure there are no peanuts. Okay. Right, and, and I think at that point we'll we'll bring everybody back to Percy's house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at this it's point, Percy yeah. done with the investigation. At that point, yeah, you all get to the house, and then Percy walks in, and he's like rubbing his forehead, and he looks over the room, sees every okay, everybody's here, uh, and then he he picks you out, Zelf, and he goes. I need to speak to you. Selfine is actually upstairs. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, she go. He will look at everybody. And goes all right. By the way, Eamon brought uh, Korg and Estelle. Yeah, I, I hope it's okay that he brought Estelle. Yes. And he goes. Oh, more people. Great. My house is filled. I am going to go find our little troublemaker, and he goes upstairs. <laughs> to be more specific. As he leaves, Brimson mutters under his breath, you're a little troublemaker. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, he thump, thump, thump. He goes up to his bedroom and, like, gently knocks on the door. Uh, he would hear, um, a little more muffled as though it is behind yet another door. Uh, yeah, come in. He opens the door. What does he see? (laughs) Uh, his room is empty, but the door to the bath is closed. He walks over and goes, "Are you are you all right in there?" I yeah, I'm just bandaging up as best as I can. Do, do you need help, or would that be weird? It'd be weird, wouldn't it? Oh. I mean, it sounds like it would be weird for you. I don't particularly care. And he opens the door. But the, and you you see him with like his hand over his eyes and goes, "Are are you? Do you okay, do you are you all right?" She. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw the chat and it ruined me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, she is sitting there, and it, um, well, he's got his eyes closed, so um, she's got her back to him. She is, she has just had a bath to try to clean herself up of all of like the blood and debris and all the other garbage from being stepped on by a gargantuan dragon queen, and um. She's pants at this point, but she does not have a shirt on. She does have her back to him, though. So all he would really see is that she's got that vast bruising across, like, basically the entire left half of her body is, like, various shades of blue and purple and even black at this point. And also the large Zentarum tattoo on her back. Yeah, I think he does that thing where he's got one hand on the doorknob, one hand over his eyes, and then he, like, moves his fingers apart (laughs) when nobody initially screams. And he sees that. And he comes over and starts, like, gingerly looking over your marks. Damn, it really did get stepped on. Yeah, it wasn't exactly pleasant she's like halfway through trying to like wrap bandages around places but it looks like she's struggling a lot in like the mobility department yeah and as you're like struggling he immediately like takes the bandages from your hands and starts bandaging you himself is it time for reggie's other favorite ship (laughs) (laughs) this is his i want inside wild I want inside. Let me be a part of this. <laughs> Let me enjoy the ships. <laughs> Delphine will sit there in quiet for a moment, and then she will finally ask, uh, so when are we headed after the Centaurum? Well, clearly you have to heal a bit first. Good night's sleep and I'll be fine. That's not how shit works. We're going to take at least a week off. I am not jumping into things right away. Oh, I need a week long nap. Uh, That's fair. They'll probably be scrambling for a little bit to figure out what's going on anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. With all the things that we have found down in the uh, the Brotherhood's base there, people are going to be busy collecting the last remainders of them. At least for a little while. But it's mostly done. Once that's wrapped up, then I'll pitch going to after the Zentarum. I still haven't told my boss about you yet, and I'm dreading this conversation. 
You and me both. He's a good man. A good dwarf. I'm sure that he'll understand what I want or that what your intentions are. But I've never <laughs> I've never incorporated a known murderer into my little program of rehabilitation. Usually it's just pickpockets. Something kind of uh, raises an eyebrow at that. Like rehabilitation. So not you know jail? I mean I don't think you deserve to go to jail right now. You just saved the world. I think that accounts for something. There'd be a giant dragon queen smashing all of Waterdeep right now if you and your friends hadn't jumped in. Buddy. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go to jail, they got uh, decent food. They've done some reforms. <laughs> she kind of shrugs and then just kind of like winces in instant regret, but then just goes, uh, I mean, if given the choice, I am kind of tired of cells. <laughs> That's what I thought. I don't suppose this is a great time to mention that uh, there's a clone of Manchun in the city, but you might, you know, need that information at some point for planning. His, like, hands have been, like, wrapping you up this whole time. They stop mid-wrap. A clone. Okay. Okay. All right, that makes sense. With and, and then he's like staring off into the distance. Says, "Yep, okay, with that, that, that definitely connects to that. That that fixes that entire theory I had. Wraps it up. Got it. That makes sense. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. I hate how wizards can just clone themselves sometimes. Like, why? <laughs> Egotistical motherfucker." I mean, to hear him tell it, he's not a clone, but we, we all know it's, it's a clone. It's, it's like all I mean, there are now of him. They're all egotistical bastards. Does it really matter which one's the real clone? <laughs> it does a lot to them. They fight wars over it, but... See, this is at why... At least I... there's only one here. At least there's that. Um, that's That's good information, though. Good to keep in mind. But, yeah, I, I know I had said I want everybody to go to an inn after this, but I, I still would prefer you here. Still keep an eye on me? Yeah, we'll say that. It's very strange that I think I trust you. I trust you more than I think I'd ever trust somebody called the Viper. But... Uh, 
I think it would be a little lonely here without you. Who else is going to sass at me? Bernard can't talk. Tony's still here. Oh, God. Don't remind me. <laughs> Ooh, I'll save the next statement for later then. <laughs> you can feel the pout from that. He goes, what did he do now? Did he eat another book? No. Two books? <laughs> did he put something in more of my ingredients? No, 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 no. I he he is mischievous to his core, but he's also very ridiculously true to his word. He didn't do any of the things that we told him not to do and that he promised he wouldn't do. Um he did um he did reproduce, however, but it's fine. What? It's fine. Not a big deal. I what? Is that a thing flumps do? I just thought they popped to ex What the? How did they? I don't want to know. I don't. I mean, know. you're not wrong, but it does require an existing flump for that to happen. <sighs> I don't want to think about flump reproduction right now. As he does its last tie, and you are all wrapped up. I mean, they're kind of adorable. They're like, they're like itty bitty and like holds up two fingers like showing the size of these tiny flumps well at least that's small enough to not cause any problems they do sting though they sting a lot uh... they, can't help they don't they, they have no control over it yet but it's a little sting it's fine it's not that bad <laughs> yeah no Duh. he's going somewhere else so anywhere else once, oh god, yeah, no, we're moving up the, the, the Zentarum stuff. Half a week, half a week of vacation. Then we're dealing with this so he can get him out of the house. Half, half a week works. And he gets up at this point and like claps his hands together. Okay, I'm gonna go down and deal with people. There's a lot of people in my house right now and I'm not ready to entertain. So I'm going to go boil a big pot of tea and try and de-stress. Calm down when you're ready. Have fun. Yep. And out he goes. Downstairs. We've got everybody here, basically. Yeah. Wesley is in the corner playing with socks. Alabaster's in the other corner, kind of awkwardly looking at Wesley. <laughs> there is this Bradley slight Bradley tension can... in the war in the air. Amy yeah. is telling like an incredibly overly heroic exaggeration of the events that recently happened. Yeah. Uh, to Estelle. Estelle is and then watching I was like, bated breath. I was like, he is a dragon. <laughs> no, I drag on these nuts. No, no. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. I hope not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Estelle doesn't like that. Negative 10 affection points. <laughs> yep. <laughs> as, a, as a quick aside, um, did Estelle happen to bring Charlie with her? She did. Good. The two of them <gasps> like came in behind Eamon. Grim is in the kitchen uh, preparing the soup pot and all, laying all the ingredients out on the table. He's wearing one of Percy's aprons, which is too small for him. Oh, Amen. definitely. It's like tied up near where you're... you're... It looks like a crop top. <laughs> it looks like a crop top, and it's like t <laughs> the, the, the waist is tied around uh, just under your titties. Yeah. I was trying to think yeah. of the word pectorals, and my brain just stopped at titties. <laughs> I mean, you're it right. <laughs> I mean, it's true when you should say it, I believe is the phrase. Um, 
As soon uh, as uh, Riley sees Wesley, she like just gives him a big old bear hug. Lucky socks, socks and all. Yeah. I'm so glad you're well, okay. I'm sorry I got kidnapped. <laughs> I suck at being a dude. watch. <laughs> that is totally not your fault. I'm I'm so glad you're okay. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, honestly, she didn't lay a finger on me. She kept I didn't going. Think she, she kept going on and on about how you were going to bring about this brave new world and I would have a place in it because I'm so smart and clever. Blah. blah. I hate how she talks like that. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> I heard either of us do. <laughs> we could be a family again. Yeah. Look who I brought. Uh, hi. <laughs> oh, you, you, Riley. You, you look like you're glowing. Riley flushes. <laughs> oh, h hello. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, so you're back from, I actually don't know what was going on this whole time, honestly. You don't have to worry about it. It is not a problem anymore. <laughs> oh, that's good. Best response ever, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Riley's just gonna introduce Charlie to uh, her brother and Alabaster. And they're just gonna chill and chat. <laughs> yeah. Eamon gets the same, like, shit-eating grin he had when he, uh, saw Percy and Selphine being, uh, <laughs> Percy and Selphine together. Yeah. <laughs> the shipper grin. At, at some point, uh, Riley, you do, like, note, like, you're standing next to one of the windows talking to people. You hear a little tap-tap on the window. Oh? And as Riley you- looks. You see two cloaked figures outside- and, like, with the light just right, you do catch Hugh's face and Lilac's face. Uh. And she, like, <gasps> motions for you to come outside for a second. Yeah, she rushes outside. And Lilac pulls you into a big hug as you run outside. I'm so glad you're safe. Yeah. I, I had no idea Radiance was pretending to be Hugh. I never would have left you with him, if her... And she, like, looks over at Hugh, and Hugh just kind of shrugs and goes, Ugh. I, 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 I did distract the, the rest of the Brotherhood, and they've scattered. I... Yeah, I thought so. I don't intend on staying in the city. What, where are you going to go? I, I honestly don't know. Hugh and I were going to go literally anywhere else. The Watch don't know that we're no longer, have always been not associated, really. We've been double agents, but I've, I'd really rather not get involved in anything else. I want to go somewhere where we can just relax. I, yeah, I understand. You guys deserve it. I, I wish I got to know you more. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Uh, I'm just glad you're safe. I'm glad Wesley's safe. Mm. But uh, as I said, I've been a part of the Brotherhood since it, before it was the Brotherhood. I can't stay here. Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be too dangerous for you guys, I understand. Well, hopefully we'll see each other um, a little bit more than 20 years plus <laughs> in between. <laughs> I'll send a paper bird. We're thinking first maybe hit, oh. how to hit up Baldur's Gate. Heard there's some wild parties down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for you. Of course. And he kind of puts uh, a hand on your shoulder and goes, you did good, kiddo. <laughs> Thanks, you. Thank you for taking care of my aunt. Anytime. 
she's, <laughs> you know, she's special. <sighs> and Riley's just kind of like tearful and just gives Lilac another big old hug. Yep. And she gives you a little kiss on the forehead as she and Hugh vanish into the darkness. Hmm. Aww. Yeah, Riley will slowly go back inside. Just to, like, wipe the tears away and just... Okay. Back to the party. Yeah. At this point, Brimstone has uh, laid out in the kitchen about every... Uh, he's kind of like assessed the number of people that we have in here and he's kind of like he realized that there's very little that he's bought that's not going to go in the soup so he's just kind of like selectively laying out like okay here's all the stuff that I know one way or another will go together and won't fuck it up. Eamon brings in the alchemist jug. Brimstone says no. Absolutely not. Oh, it's, I was just gonna say for like honey and boiling water Oh, actually, like, can it do broth? Yeah. Yeah. It can totally do that. It I mean, it does like tea. Be... No, it, I, like, it does tea, so, like, I'm assuming it can do broth. Hey, Leanne, can it do broth? Uh... Vanilla? I don't know. Vanilla broth? I mean, vanilla, <laughs> uh... <laughs> El, uh, Elk me jug. <laughs> like, well, like, we do oh, vanilla. Yeah, Got yeah. Because I think we home brewed in that it does tea. Well, yeah. it does. It does tea, and it does acid. So can it like a little bit of acid, a little bit of tea with like a le like a lemony tasting broth, maybe? Ew. I don't know. Yeah, acid, but, basic or, poison, beer, honey, mayonnaise, oil, vinegar, water, <laughs> water, salt, wine. I mean. Like, a lot of those things actually go really good as part of a broth for tea, or uh, for, for soup. Like, mead and, and honey. Like, honey and beer, that's like mead. And then there's like vinegar, salt, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's oh. up to Leanne, but I'm... I, I'm I'm good with whatever we want to do here. Yeah. yeah. But a a basically, Eamon is going to use like the alchemist jug, a little bit of like like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, everything except the poison, obviously, uh, to make a, a decent tasting uh, heated broth for the soup, and that'll be like the base. Okay. Sounds good. If that's okay yeah. with Brimstone. Yeah, as long as that's okay with Leanne. Yep. That that sounds doable. Yeah. Okay. So we got we got a good broth. Uh. Yeah, and uh, Brim and Eamon to... will put in. Eamon will put in some um, some crushed crab. Uh, uh, it, he'll put in some crushed crab shell and a little bit of fish. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. <gasps> so that's what happened to Sheldon. Da -da -da. No, no, dude. He <laughs> no, 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 what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah. Brim at this point will um call people in, uh, call everybody in, and uh, as he's got everybody in the kitchen, he's going to tend put anybody who doesn't, you know, understand it, he's going to uh, point, like, say that this is, like, you know, participating is totally voluntary, but um, he would appreciate it if people did, you know, just explain how family soup works. Um, and he's got all the ingredients laid out. Um, and he's definitely going to, uh, you know, he's going to kind of get up in front of everybody and say, well, um, I've been thinking a lot recently about what family means and there's a lot of ways that family can be there's a lot of you know there's a lot of times that people might be called family but you know they might not share that close of a bond there's uh families that are formed uh through experience sharing the road sharing uh you know uh, sharing stories. The family that has sort of happened here is is one that has been in the works, shall we say, for many years. 
and comes from a lot of different places. Ultimately, at the end of the day, <clears throat> every every individual thread that makes up this story is, I feel, an important one. And I feel one that deserves its time to, you know, uh, be recognized. And I just want to say that I... Years ago, I don't think that I would have... I don't think that I, I... If you had told me three years ago even that I would be here talking to a bunch of people who I consider family, I don't think I would have believed you. But I'm glad that I'm glad that I could do something that would make my younger self so incredulous. And wherever we go from here, I want you all to know that each and every one of you has a special place in my heart. Eamon raises a glass and goes, here, here. And then Brim kind of claps his uh, hands together and goes, all right, let's make some soup. Hell yeah. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do we want to do this, Leanne? Do we want to do individual ingredients, or just kind of... I mean, everybody who has a player character, tell me what you're putting in the soup. Uh, <laughs> Amond already put in some, uh, like, fresh up crab shells that are just gonna kind of sit at the bottom for flavor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And some fish. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Riley, what are you putting in the soup? Yeah, uh, bits of uh, carrots and celery, and also a few basil leaves. Okay. Selfie's keeping a very close eye on Tony. Yeah, Tony tries to keeping a very close eye on Korg. Yeah, Tony tries to put a scorpion in, but you grab it before <laughs> he slips it in. <laughs> you know, you know when someone's like trying, like if an animal gets into a house and someone's like, oh shit, oh shit, and like holding it by the tail or something. That's what Amon's doing to the scorpion, trying to get it out of here. Yep. Whenever anybody walks up to the soup and Brim's there, low under his breath so just they can hear it, Brim will just very quietly, very earnestly say, thank you. Riley, after that, Riley would give Brim a big family hug. Mm. Big old bear hug. Eamon gives him a firm handshake. First oh, hug. He gives him a hug. He gives him a hug. Okay. Uh, well, you can say he gives him a high five. <laughs> I'm picturing, like, you go for, a handshake. You go for the handshake yeah. and, like, do that arm grasp thing and then pull each other into a hug. Yeah. Aw, uh, yeah, that's good. I thought you were going to say it was, uh, like, uh, Eamon was going for a pound and, like, uh, Brim was going for a handshake and then they fumble around awkwardly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what does Zelfine do? Uh, Zelfine before, uh, she, she was kind of sitting on the stairs, uh, just kind of keeping out of the way when she came down. But uh, on her way to the kitchen, she is going to pass Percy and just kind of whisper, I don't know how to cook. What should go in this pot? <sighs> I don't know if they have garlic in there yet. That always ha is a hit. Uh, potatoes. Potatoes are good. Okay, I think Who I'm do you know who keeps potatoes on them? <laughs> Amon, I don't know what you're going them, for, but... but he has like a whole pantry over there. Yeah. <laughs> that whole room. Have you not seen it? <laughs> I snooped. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Damon keeps potatoes on him. Yes, but nobody wants those potatoes. Darn it. 
Not when we have a whole thing that we just bought. There's a pile of stuff. <laughs> Yay. If Eamon is whispering this to her, she's gonna whisper back, Keep your pocket potatoes, I'm going for the stuff that's already peeled and chopped. Hey. And she will add, uh, garlic and just kind of look back at Eamon and shake her head and then add some potatoes. Eamon gives her a fake thumbs up. <laughs> and, uh, I think Searsha. Yeah. Um, and we'll say thank you to Zelfie as well, of course. Searsha will add... A cup of orange juice to keep the acidity from the lemon juice, um, but kind of make it a little bit of a sweeter dish. Ah. Um, and she will also pull a little pouch out from her pocket and sprinkle in a seasoning. Um, I'm blanking oh. on if this is the name of it or not, but Zahir seasoning? Zahar seasoning? Zahar? Yeah, that stuff. Some of that. For nice. A little bit of sweet spice. Oh. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. Inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. So so far we have got like the the uh, broth, which has got like a, a lemon juice, uh, crushed crab shells, fish, carrots, celery, basil, garlic, potatoes, orange juice, and za'atar. Yeah, Percy puts in, in some in some onions and a little bit of uh, salt because nobody salted anything yet. <laughs> oh, the broth has salt in it. <laughs> That's true. We do have a we do have a broth. Yeah, he still puts in a little bit of salt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Selfie added a bunch salt. of potatoes. It's gonna need more salt. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he did that in response, basically. That's adorable. Um, Estelle yeah. comes up in like goes, needs more ham! Put some ham in there. Yeah. <laughs> and he gives a big thumbs up. I don't think our campaign needs more ham. <laughs> she thinks it needs more ham. <laughs> <laughs> ham it up! Eamon looks directly at the camera. Yeah. Charlie comes over and um, puts in, like, some nuts. And a little bit of, no, like, no some... No peanuts, though, right? No, no peanuts. Wait, 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 no nuts. She, like, um, yeah, she she goes her. to do that, and then she goes, "Oh, um, a mushroom soup's always good." And she puts in some mushrooms instead. Yeah. Better. <laughs> and Alabaster just looks completely out of it, staring at all these ingredients. Like she is overstimulated, and she's just kind of like shaking Aww. a bit. And goes, I, 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 I don't know what would be be good. Um. Well, uh, uh, Brim is used to people being a little unsure, and he'll he'll go over like the remaining ingredients, and he'll sort of cut out all bastard, and he'll say it's all about what you want in it. Of these, what what do you enjoy eating? What smells do you enjoy? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't really think about that. I eat what's given to me. A microwave is done cooking the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> That's the oven. Patrick's cooking things. Uh, He's getting into character. You want to give each of the ingredients a try and see which ones you like? Yeah. That's, actually, that's a great idea, Riley. Yeah, and she, like, this very gingerly starts picking at some of the ingredients. And finally settles on, like, some chives and puts those inside. And just, they're, mm. like, I like those, yes. Mm -hmm. They're great awesome. with the potatoes. Mm. This is basically a shower. <laughs> yeah. Wesley comes up, kind of gin, like softly and behind Alabaster, and goes, "Are uh, you all right?" And she goes, "I would like to t 
talk to you later p prop properly. I, y yeah. And he kind of nods and looks over the ingredients himself and puts in like some li like little chili. Little chopped up chili peppers. For a little bit of spice. spice. A little bit of spice. I did not take Wesley for like a spice guy. He's allergic to nuts, but he likes a little bit of spice. What does cord put in? What does cord put in? Dare I ask? He, <laughs> he puts in a turnip. One turnip. One turnip, and then you like you have to stop him before he puts it in because he doesn't bother to chop it up. He just pulled out a turnip <laughs> out of nowhere, and you. You got you got to quarter it first, cord. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. I noticed how Eamon does not at all judge him for carrying around a turnip. He just has a turnip. So yeah, we, have to take a se we have to take a second to, like, fucking wash it and peel it and, <laughs> and quarter it. Yep. yep. <laughs> His pocket turnip. It's an orcish tradition to carry around a root vegetable with you. Yep. Is it? Dan, you've uh, created something that is now canon, I hope you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's the point. If it wasn't an orca tradition, it is now. Yep. It keeps you connected to the earth. <coughs> uh, we got everyone? I think so. so. There's so many, people, so many people, and I don't even have tokens for all of them, because Charlie doesn't have a token. <laughs> I've neglected to make a Charlie token this entire time because she hasn't yeah. been in any fights or anything. I don't think Alderson put anything in. Uh, oh, true, yeah. True, yes, I am missing yeah, Alderson. Yeah, yeah. I, him... I do have a token for Alderson. I'll put him up um, If I may. Go for it. You know him uh, better than he... me. <laughs> <laughs> he will put in some pepper and... I'm thinking either spinach or cilantro. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I don't want to, Eamon's like, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm one of the people with, like, the cilantro gene. Uh, it, I don't know what that means, but okay, I'll put in the uh, spinach instead. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explain, thank you. I believe I just made that together. <laughs> All right, and I think that is everybody now. Yeah. Brim will look at the soup, um, and uh, he'll he'll kind of like look at all all this, and it's it's probably probably smelling pretty good. Good. This is a pretty coherent dish that we've created, um, and because Ian doesn't really know soup uh, in real life, uh, but I'm going off of suggestion from, <laughs> from shelves in chat. Probably like a cream, like a what do you think, like a heavy cream? Oh yeah, I was I was saying that in response to to Dan saying it was like a chowder. Yeah, if we want to make it a chowder, add some like milk or cream to it. Yeah. Oh, you get... Yeah, yeah. So Brem's gonna probably add like a, a little bit of like um, of like cream to the to the soup and just kind of get it uh, you know, you, you begin uh, stirring it and stuff. Do I do I roll for soup now? Yeah, let's roll for some soup. Uh, uh do, does it get advantage? Of course it gets advantage. There's so many good people here in the soup. Yeah. And, and, and Percy's here. Percy is the deciding key factor, frankly. <laughs> He's been Percy adjusting. Like he probably is like a plus 15 to cook it. <laughs> cooking lore. He has cooking lore. He has already started falling into the Pathfinder. Uh, what, uh, what might I get uh, to a bonus from that? Well, uh... I will, maybe. Well, I, I, I have... Do I have proficiency in cooking? You tell me. I don't think. <laughs> I, think it, this, I think as far as soup, Brim does. I think Brim does have proficiency in soup. Because I know proficiency... There is proficiency oh. in uh, cooking t utensils. Yes. I, this could be survival yeah. as well as it could be that. I know he's proficient in that. Oh, he's got the, the sniffer. He can Would smell... He's, he's good at tasting and smelling stuff. Well, yeah, we'll I got nature. Yeah, we'll say it's either proficiency with, uh, like, wisdom, maybe, or survival. <laughs> uh, per, so wisdom, with a wisdom proficiency? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is a 17. 
This is Woo. a very good soup. Wait, Eamon casts, uh, Eamon casts Bless. Roll a d4. <laughs> good soup. You know what? Fair enough. Uh, that's a it's four. It's soup. That's, so that's a 21? This is the best soup. <laughs> All of this it's coming really together. Good soup. It's delicious. Tingles on mm-hmm. your taste buds in all the right ways. Sweet and salty and hearty. Got a little bit of mm-hmm. kick to it. And Just the- like dad used to make. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what kind of soup my dad would have made. I've never met the man. I thought he was a pit fiend. I... I don't know. I've never. I don't know anything about my dad. I think we just kind of assumed that because, like, I mean, look you at know, me. and like, Selfine like takes her hand and like kind of like raises it over her, hand, her head in a gesture of tall. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. I don't know. Is that like racist to assume that? That no, it definitely is. I'm sorry, Brimstone. I mean, listen, it's all good. Listen, if the guy cared about being- if the guy was A, alive, and cared about being in my life, he would have been here by now. Good way to think about that. Well, we're I'll here. I'll take this. I'll take this over some random mysterious dude. Oh, random mysterious dude reminds me. Uh, excuse me. Zelfine is going to, uh, enter the study and grab her sending stone. And uh, send to Adele. Are you Random busy? Serious dad. <laughs> There's a beat of silence before the sound lights up again and goes, "I'm here." I did not die. Good job. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, gave it the old, uh, the, the best try that I had, though. Um, <laughs> so I've skimmed the history of Shaladar. Something about Tiamat being a planet. That's right. Well, here she is a big fucking dragon with five heads and, um, well, she reached through a portal of hell and stepped on me. But I made it. There's kind of a pause there and goes, I think you might have stopped an invasion war. I It, it sounds like that was the plan. That's what happened here. The war of invasion. They appeared. People under the control of Tiamat, orcs and humans. They tore across the world and slaughtered us. That's why there's so few elves left. The further they got away from Tiamat, the less her hold had. And eventually, people broke away from it. You've done good. Something like that will not happen to your planet today. Keep an eye on it, though. Tiamat is tenacious. Yeah, well, I, I stabbed her right in the foot, so I think she'll, you know, think twice about who she steps on. <laughs> Very well. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. I will. Good night, daughter. Good night, dad. And then she will, uh, rejoin the others. Yeah, I didn't have any. Oh, go ahead. 
Yeah, you you will see Wesley and Alabaster kind of having this awkward conversation in the corner, but they seem to be doing mm-hmm. okay. Mm. I don't know if Riley wants to eavesdrop or not. She is very, very curious. Do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Riley's gonna eavesdrop. <laughs> She's gonna hide behind the corner and go, hmm? Hmm? Yeah, you, you get the gist of the conversation. Wesley is pretty nervous to be around Alabaster, but Alabaster is expressing that she is sorry. She's expressing that she wants to help make right what she's done. And he's awkwardly suggesting to uh, help out the watch. Mm. And there's this kind of there's a slight tension, but you can tell that they are consoling over what uh, Radiance has done to both of them. Mm. Yeah, that's the gist of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to roleplay talking to myself. For like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, she she uh Riley is satisfied with that. She's like thinking it's gonna take a while, but I think they're gonna be okay. Yeah. Lots of trauma to heal. <laughs> oh yeah. It doesn't take a day. At it one takes point... a while. <laughs> Sorry. Oh you're good, you're good. Um at one point during the night, Rain would like to get Sirsha and Riley and Amon and Zelphine together. Just the five of us. Okay. And uh, just kind of like you know, not like anywhere secret or but or like or like off to the side or already, but just like get all of us to get into conversation. Be like, so uh, we did it. We probably should talk about you know, what now? Oh, I don't know. I think I want to go to war. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Avon <laughs> knows what he wants. <laughs> what he wants. It's, what he, it's not what I want. It's what I have to do. Yep. One battle to the next, I see. Well, I think Susha and I were going to go to Devil's Ages. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um... Anybody else have any plans? Um, I, Amon, I, I would, I will do what I can to help you out with war, but I have a, I have a home I gotta, I have a home I gotta take care of too. Grimstone, I would not ask you to help. This is not your fight; it's mine. I mean, you could say that about half the fucking fights we've done, but I get you. <laughs> I have what about the half the fights we've done? You could say- Listen, so many of the fights we've gotten into have been to deal with other, like, to deal with people trying to kill a different one of us for one reason or another. Look, I won't lie, my backstory is a little bit disjointed from y'all's, but... <laughs> no, but I get I get you. Um, yeah, just be safe, Amy. Thank you. I will. Yeah, Riley gives Amon a big hug. I'm, I'm not leaving yet, guys. I know. I'm very huggy today. Just love you, hug you. Yeah, I gotta fight giants. If you want, you can push me away if you want. It's fine. <laughs> if no, you don't want hugs. Keep hugging me. <laughs> I need it. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm I thought so. I don't want to go to war. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't, don't push yourself too hard. Don't. Feel like you have to sacrifice yourself for something great, because we want you around. Yeah, we've proven, and Brimstone will look around at all of them, and point, look specifically <laughs> at Zelvin, that you don't have to sacrifice yourself to save the world. <laughs> Zelvin sticks it. her tongue out at him, but then does smile. <laughs> I'm gonna tell on you to Sirsha if I hear you did that again. 
What am I going to do? Call me no one gonna do. Again, probably. Hmm. Probably. I mean, I, speaking of, I... You know, Eamon, I, I would help you whether you wanted me to or not, but I... I got my own battle upcoming, I guess. We got kind of a criminal organization to deal with. Damn. Damn. Oh, you gotta find money to raise an army. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, wait a second. I have 2,000 platinum. I was gonna say, for someone who is looking for a lot of money, you seem like you're good to go. Yeah, you know what? I need money. I only have 2,000 platinum. <laughs> I have... <laughs> I've got like bring some of right, these no, bags. I, 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 have, I have 130 platinum, which, we, which equates to 1,300 gold pieces, which is definitely not enough to raise an army. Selfie I pulls protest. out her, Selfie pulls out her mm -hmm. coin bag and counts and goes, "I have 25 gold, and 80 percent of that is technically yours." I've got like you can uh, keep it. Some look I wasn't giving it back. Like, uh, I've got this gross <laughs> belt that's my tail. I've got uh, oh, I've got that little hand get it. None of you have money. Oh my god, I understand. I'm sorry for even asking. It was very rude for me to assume. <laughs> you have 69 cents. You know what that means? You don't have enough for chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She just looks <laughs> bewildered over the banter. Yeah. Riley, what are what are you gonna do? I'm going to Disneyland. I'm going to Disney World. I think I've had enough adventures for one lifetime. I think I am actually gonna stay here. Not not at Percy's place, of course. Looking at Percy, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not staying here here. I mean, water deep. I, I think I want to get my life back. You know, Estelle has a hat shop. She's got to rebuild, and Selfie will take a loud sip of tea. <laughs> I wonder if she wants a partner. Worth asking. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta ask her about something, too. Oh, well, um, okay. It sounds like we've all kind of got our own stuff to do from this point on. Yeah. Doesn't mean we won't see each other again. I'm not exactly gonna be far away, but uh, you might have to brave some giants in order to find me. I'll technically still be in Waterdeep. I think Sirsh and I probably will be the furthest away, but we'll, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, Brim kind of looks at Sirsh, we'll try and visit as much as we can, yeah? Of course. You've still got those paper birds I gave you, right? Yeah. I do. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, and, um... If anybody needs any help with anything, like, I think it probably goes without saying, we're all just, you know, a paper bird away. Just keep in touch. Of course. We do live in a I... world with wizards who teleport, also. How many times do we have to tell you we don't have any money, Eamon? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure you can get like one, like, there's gotta be like a, you, tell, you get a free teleport if you save the world deal or something. <laughs> that at least. <laughs> then again, a lot of people who have saved the world live in water deep for some reason. But yeah, I I'm gonna miss you all. Yeah. It's been an honor. I'll miss you all too, but I know we'll see each other again. We have yeah. such a strong bond. Plus, uh, we don't have to leave yet. For now, we party! Yeah! Woo! If everybody will let them, Brim will try, like, kind of get everybody into a group hug. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. down for hugs. 
yeah. Delphine will join the hub. She will, will stay on the outside of it so as not to be squeezed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fair. Wow. My ribs are broken, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. The party goes on long into the night. At one point, Korg sings a little ditty that catches you all a little off guard. Come here, a tale of a dragon slayer with ruby eyes and a flying dagger. To rescue his love, he became a hero, the devil of Karashiro. And the camera cuts to outside as you see a raven flying off into the past the moon. And that is where we'll end it for today. Uh, Yay! Yeah! <laughs> we know that guy. That's <laughs> <laughs> Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah, there's your Stan Lee cameo. Hey, we guys, we did it. We did we it. We did it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we beat the Dungeons and Dragons. For those at home, we'll be probably doing one more thing for a epilogue. But after that, this is it. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. sticking so with you'll us get this to whole time. See, uh, yeah. yeah. You'll get to see all of these little threads that we just hinted at uh, tie up a little bit in a little epilogue. Yeah. But then we've got to see if Aiden dies or not. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll take a break, and then after that, we've got a new thing on the works. Yeah. So, it'll be wonderful Pathfinder time. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Yeah. I'm so hyped <laughs> to, to run Pathfinder. But, yeah, I just. I just want to say to everybody here, this has been an incredible journey. I we've been through a lot as like a group of friends and like as you know a a, a group just in general, you know, since we started this. But this has been wonderful and heartfelt, and I'm so glad that I could do this with you all. It it's been really special to me. Yeah. 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 Same Much here. like our actual characters, when we first started, I barely knew you people. But now you all yeah. family. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no! I had oh. literally never DM'd before I did this. And thanks for sticking did... with me as I was super nervous the first few episodes. <laughs> you did yeah, amazing, I... though. I'm so proud yeah. of you. <laughs> I appreciate you all tolerating the character that I wrote when I was 13 and then didn't make any changes to until I was, like, 19. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I Beautiful. love you guys. <laughs> yeah. I was there too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we, are, you, Sarah. we are overjoyed to have had you. Yeah. Yes. You've been a treat. Yeah. Just search has I, been a treat. <laughs> I for the listeners, Sarah is a new addition to the show, but she's been with us this whole time and we love her very much. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't she on didn't she play Irina in the early yeah, episode? Yeah, Irina. Yes. Yes. Irina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if, if her yeah. voice is familiar, that's where it's from. Yeah. Uh-huh. Same also, voice. Thanks to, also thanks to our guest, um, Ambrose, who did uh yes. Amon's mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jatana. That's right. Yeah. 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 That was great too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. Very good. <laughs> Ambrose also did our uh, theme song mm-hmm. we had for the Barovia arc. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Thank you so much, Ambrose. Yeah. Yeah. It was good stuff. And just thank you guys all for listening and and joining us for this dumb dumb ride. Mm-hmm. Remember yeah. to love you guys too. Chris's. Yeah, like we when we started posting this on YouTube, it was for posterity and for anybody in our own little bubble to go listen to at some point. We didn't really um, ever picture it as like a show or something that we people would find and like listen to on their own without the context. So for those yeah. of you who did, uh, specifically Beaks three two one, I yes, see Beaks you. Yes, Beaks three two one. <laughs> I see you. I see you. And we love you. I, <laughs> it makes our day that anybody could like listen to this like zero production value, just us having a good goof in time, and enjoy it. So thank you. Yeah, like we've, and we've like, tried yeah, to produce. The, the... Oh, good. I was gonna say all the fan art, all the comments. We've seen all of them, and I still have a ton of fan art on my phone. I just like adore it so much. Yeah, I have some really on my wall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, Rihanna did one of my favorite fan arts of, of Bram and Eamon and Eamon going, what do you smell, boy? Yeah. 
<laughs> what am I funnier? Rina. Lines, I gotta say. Rina, sorry. Yeah, Rina, I'm, like, sorry. I'm like, who's Rihanna? No, it's Rihanna. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> Rihanna. Cathal, who drew the uh, the Zelfine using Aemond as a lamp for her book That is it's so perfect. Name. It lives rent free in my head. It's so good. Oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, it's but so yeah, we good. Love, we love all the all the people who have who have supported on this, uh, supported us in this. It's been really great. We've we've tried to do other shows with like more higher production value, but this is just the way that it's worked for us. Yeah, it's just here have the oh, audio. and one more shout out. Yep. Yeah, one more shout out to Aya, who did a bunch of awesome uh, fan art. And my favorite one of uh, Amond and Riley going, come on. Yeah, That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> special so, uh, thanks for Reggie for barking again. Yeah. And boy. special Sorry. guest Reggie. <laughs> yeah, this show is older than Reggie. Put that in perspective. It's literally older than Reggie. <laughs> oh, my God. What were you going to say, Sarah, I think? I don't remember. Oh, no. I don't think it was important. I'm just... I'm just feeding off the energy people are putting out. For sure. <laughs> well, it's been, the good vibes. It's, it's been so good, but it's, well, for now, we'll say goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. See you for the epilogue.